just hundred cc's for the shooters. This is every dope thing stream that's a the emotional impact of Manger on McNichols by Boldy James is staggering. When I listen to this album, it consumes me. I find myself thinking about it for hours after. And to me, that's a clear sign of something that is masterfully constructed and beautifully written. With this album, Boldy James takes his personal story and somehow makes strangers care about it. He convinces them that this is something that they should pay attention to. Any writer will tell you that having people care about your work and recognize its importance is one of the most rewarding feelings in the world. But it's not always easy to get people to care. There are millions of stories out there every single day. Why should anyone care about yours, right? But in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what you and I can learn from Boldy's approach to storytelling on Major on McNichols, specifically what makes Major McNichols, such an emotionally impactful and urgent story that grabs the listener's attention. So for the sake of clarity, I've narrowed down three things that Boldy James does on this album that you and me can easily adapt into our own writing. The first thing that Boldy does is answer this simple question, and I already alluded to it a little bit earlier in the video. Why should the audience care? When you are particularly focused on making your writing compelling, this is one of the first questions you should be asking. Why is this story important? Is there something about this story that speaks to a personal or societal condition? The answer to that question will almost always be yes. No matter what the subject matter is, there's typically some pathos in it that you can draw from in your story to make it universally relatable. It's not always about what the story is, it's about how you tell it. Boldy demonstrates this perfectly by telling us why we should care about his story from the opening lines of the first track on the album, Medusa. The track opens with a vocal snippet of a woman talking about how Detroit was once a promised land, a place of booming industry where there was always something to do. No matter your class or race, there was always a way to make a living for yourself, even if it was doing the jobs that no one else would do. But that's no longer the case anymore. At the end of her speech, she simply states, now there's nothing to do but stand on the corner. Immediately with these few lines, with this vocal snippet in the beginning of the album, Boldy paints the setting of this album and tells us that everything that follows, all that Boldy says, is important because it was in some part influenced by the destabilization of a major city. It speaks to the reality that as much as we like to consider ourselves free in America, independent and economically flexible, most of us still find our daily lives directly affected by the socioeconomic dynamics in our local surroundings and nationally too. Instead of building on this theme and spelling it out in some preachy, melodramatic way, which in my opinion would take away from some of its impact, Act, Boldy starts off the song following the snippet by placing himself in the heart of this conflict. His first words read, Con creatures, 100 cc's for the shooters, this is every dope fiend's dream that's a tuner, therapeutic to the user, the heroin abusers, no I'm a con creature like I'm staring at Medusa. Now if you've listened to Boldy at all, you know that his signature phrase, well one of his many signature phrases, is con creature. It's a pretty straightforward play on words concrete plus creatures, but let's take a step back and really think about how brilliant this phrase is and how it directly correlates with the sentiment, now there's nothing to do but stand on the corner. The description of being a creature obviously directly connects with some kind of animalistic instinct. We typically think of this as primal and of course that's 100% there. Concreatures are those who survive, they're hustling out on the street, all of that. But for every action sequence a Nat Geo documentary has of a lion or a bear or a cheetah, hunting, dominating, being primal, there are just as many of those animals simply laying around, existing, resting. Out in the wild, there isn't much to do other than survive. The idea of being a con creature is just as much about the game as it is about standing on the corner with nothing to do. Having nothing to do and having no prospects is similarly devastating for those who fell down the path of drug addiction. Boldy even describes heroin as therapeutic to these abusers, again signaling that they're also really just trying to survive. That's ultimately what a con creature is in the context of this album, someone caught in the cycle and survival of suffering. So right off the bat, despite there only having been maybe like 20 or 30 seconds in the track, we already have something that speaks directly to the human condition and it's something that's universal. And after introducing the setting and beginning to convey why these themes are important, he officially starts off his personal narrative by saying, no, I'm a con creature like I'm staring at Medusa. As we go through the track, Boldy doubles down on this personal perspective 
perspective, including another vocal snippet, which this time is someone, presumably another con creature, calling boldly and asking where he is, why he's been MIA, when work is moving fast and there's lots of money to be had on the streets. The vocal snippet finishes off with his friend simply saying, what's going on with you, man? And we're gonna soon find out that there is a lot going on with Boldy. Now, I've spent a lot of time setting his first official verse up, and that's because Boldy has done all this setup for a reason. As I go through this first verse, think about everything that we talked about. Think about everything that came before. My lady on my case, so I'm filling out an app. All I know how to do is whip dust and a Pyrex. Got a baby on the way. It's a mess. Have you ever been convicted of a felony? Yes. Check in the box to the left, say no, fresh out the box with a fresh new caseload, step out the box for a sec, think bold, they ain't trying to hire you with jailhouse tattoos. Okay, that was a lot, but what I want to first point out is that not a single line here was wasted. Every line here reveals new information or a new layer to Boldy's perspective or situation. And each line further explains why you and I should care at all about the situation he's in. All throughout the rest of the song and throughout the entire album, you'll see how Boldy constantly reminds the audience of the stakes. He's not obnoxious or heavy handed about it. He doesn't spend too much time ruminating or waxing poetic about themes. He simply presents the facts and allows the audience to do the rest of the digging. If you do this in your own writing and set up early in your song, story, or script, why the audience should care, and then constantly, tastefully remind them of the stakes and consequences at hand, it will leave a stronger impression on your audience, provided what you're talking about is interesting enough. And that leads me to the second thing that Boldy does brilliantly on this track, subverting expectations. I want to return back to the first few lines because the subversion here is that being a con creature actually kind of sucks. This track sees Boldy constantly losing, which is not what you typically hear in raps about selling coke and heroin. Even more importantly, being a con creature is not just about hustling and surviving, it's about being incredibly afraid and insecure all of the time. In this verse, Boldy says all he knows how to do is whip dust in a Pyrex. The prospect of being a father completely terrifies him, and he knows that he's ill-equipped to be a father and have any form of real legal employment because where he grew up, there was nothing to do but stand on the corner. That's what's going on with Boldy. Now that he's out of jail, now that he's out of the box, he's finding that there's no sort of rehabilitation program, there's no one really to help him, and as we skip forward through the rest of the verse, predictably, he doesn't get the job. And the rent comes due, and the cable gets cut off, so what does Boldy do? The only thing he knows how to do well, sell. Even though the portrayal of both his personal life and the society around him subvert the typical expectation of what you might expect on an album like this, it serves the heart of what Boldy's talking about, which is ultimately, this is an album about survival, which is what most coke rap albums are about. It's just done in a lot more of a flashy and braggadocious way. The third thing that Boldy James does on this album that I think really makes it emotionally impactful and compelling is that he bears his soul completely. I wanted to touch on this because Boldy said that producer Sterling Tolls encouraged him to be more personal on this album, and unsurprisingly, during the writing process and after the release of this album, Boldy found himself in a really dark place. But honestly, I think it's a shame we didn't get more of this side of Boldy because the personal element of the story is exactly what makes it powerful. And, and being vulnerable in my writing is something I struggle with too, so it's inspiring to see someone literally put their heart and soul on their sleeve. And why I really want to highlight this is because the audience can tell when someone really puts their all into a project, and the art is almost always served better for it. If you have a story you want to tell and it's lacking that heart, that extra something that really drives it all home, I encourage you to really dig deep and investigate the reason why you wanted to tell that story in the first place. One thing that I've been asking myself when I'm working on my own project is, am I being honest? Am I really saying everything that I want to say? And this is a really tough question to ask because it's scary being a new writer. It's scary being a writer in general. You're putting your thoughts and your emotions and experiences out there for the entire world to pick away at and draw their own conclusions from. But if you feel like you're holding back and pulling your punches narratively, the audience will feel the same way. And honestly, being honest in your writing doesn't always have to mean having a confessional style like Boldly has on Main Drama McNichols. It just means that you're representing yourself and your art in exactly the way that you want to, no holds barred. When you really start living by that ideology, your unique voice will naturally start to blossom. And it'll take some time, but that's completely fine. Just keep writing in the meantime. 
for Boldy, on this album and in his career and in his life, he's someone who lives and breathes Detroit. You can see it. It's obvious. He's a con creature, and he doesn't compromise on that fact, despite most, if not all, of his fans just saying the phrase and block words in 227 because it sounds cool. And yeah, it really does sound cool. It's fun. But that's my whole point. We're willing to hear his story because he's so honest and upfront about it. And a big part of that is the really strong story structure, the really strong narrative structure that's on this album. It's one that subverts expectations, again, grabs the audience's attention immediately by explaining why this is important to you and me. And there's a bunch of other awesome writing techniques and approaches that go on on this track and on this album, but ultimately what really holds it all together is Boldy's commitment to honesty and authenticity. So that's what I have for this video. Like I said, this is just part one of Mandrell McNichols because there is so much going on in this album. It's so incredibly dense. So honestly, if you need to rewatch, if you need a couple of points clarified, if there's something you think I missed or you disagree or you know you agree with something that I said, please keep the conversation going on in the comments because honestly, probably put too much into one video. <laughs> it was a lot to talk about. So please keep the discussion going on in the comments. Let me know some other albums, some other artists you'd like me to see do a lyrical breakdown on. Check out a couple of my other writing videos. I do a couple of other lyrical breakdown videos as well. If you're interested in kind of keeping up with what's going on on this channel, please give a like, subscribe, put on the notifications because sometimes the algorithm is just really screwy for absolutely no reason. So if you made it this far and had the attention span, um, thank you. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, and I will see you next time. Be safe, make good decisions. Have a good one. Bye.